Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. A treat especial. We're gonna have a couple chuckles in the shop. What we are gonna do is I've been I've been trying to figure out a way to one turbo boost power tools easily. You know, sometimes uh, you're on a big long extension cord and you trip the breaker. There's got to be a way around that. Also, what if you need a little extra oomph? Or what if you need slower speed but still the same amount of torque? Okay, so I came across this on the flea bay. It is a one phase inverter. It'll output 400 hertz. Now for brush tools, uh, we don't care about the hertz because it's self commutating. However, we can change the voltage because this is on obviously volts hertz control. So if you if you turn this down to like say 10 volt uh, hertz, it'll consequently reduce the voltage going to the tool as well. Reduced voltage on a brush tool equals slower speed. Huh? Huh? Now, uh, our buddy Muncie, who I'm subscribed to, I watch some of his things. I think it's Muncie. Uh, his name is in the doobly-doo. He's been trying, somebody asked him to figure out how they could take a regular old chop saw and use it as a cold cut saw. And I ran into this dicking around way before I ever made Vigeos, trying to use a triac, this, that, and the other thing. The triac always blows out, can't handle the heat. So, we're going to try this. I bought this Fire and Squaw from Shenzhen Now Forever Electronics Company Co. Limited. After six drinks, try and remain upright and protect others from your vomit. And this is a lot like the GS2 drive from Automation Direct. It does have the removable cover here, and that's the same pinout as the GS2. So you can mount this someplace else. Again, this is odd because it's single phase in and single phase out. Normally, you, uh, you'd see three phase out. Now, inverters are an extremely interesting bit of kit because what they actually do is they input single, uh, they'll input AC. Okay, so if you look at the voltage, it's going up and down through, you know, AC, eh. and it rectifies it in DC. So what you end up with is whole bunch of DC pulses on one side of the zero so the voltage is all going the same direction instead of going this way and this way 60 times a second all the pixies are going this way and then we put in a whole bunch of capacitors and that keeps them from dancing to from bouncing up and down uh, it, it levels them out and that's what's called the DC bus on here then there's a confuser well in here there's a confuser that turns off and on some IGBTs, insulated gate bipolar transistors, and it chops it up using pulse width modulation, chops it up into AC again. But the whole deal is it takes AC, turns it to DC, and then the confuser can go ahead and give you any AC you want. Instead of just being 60 hertz, it could be 400 hertz. 400 hertz! So that's gonna be a little bit difficult for setting the parameters. At least we do have a drawing. So earth, all that stuff, and here's all your inputs on here. There's also a relay. Uh, that's on the main board here. And some other stuff going on. I guess this is all comms. Now we won't be using any of that fancy stuff, but it goes to, to show that, you know, you think you're getting a real good deal. I think it was 150, 200 bucks. Then the comparable one with proper documentation is 500 bucks. The thing is, of course, I can't use it to its utmost capability because I can't read the Fergan manual. And this is actually held in by proper fasteners, which is surprising. It's not just clipped in. All the soldering, the, the reflow soldering looks great. Nothing wrong with that. Lots of Celastic keeping the surface mount stuff. Well, I'm surprised they didn't use surface mount, but I guess they could get the through hole cheaper. And then they just go ahead and skookumify that with some Celastic. They even celastic the ribbon cable, which is nice. So what's gonna happen is the input's gonna come in here. It's gonna get rectified and filtered on the DC bus by these capacitors. Capacitors are like hydraulic accumulators. They're also batteries, they, they store energy. Okay, on this big beefy heat sink with an actual proper fan, of course, there's, there's the IGBT module there. That would be 
four leads. Okay, so that's a single phase rectifier. AC comes in, DC comes out. And then this guy gets controlled by the microcontroller in here to chop up that DC into the output that we want, whatever we program it. Say we want 30 hertz or 400 hertz. That's pretty much all there is to it. So this is a little bit different. We got some hot snot on here on the heat sink, which the heat sink is going to get hot. Uh, probably not the best. You'd be better off with the Solastic. This looks to be an over temp probe or something, some sort of uh, resistor or, or diode even that uh, changes with temperature. Now this is interesting. On the power traces, they've added some solder. However, if you can see, there's these bars across there. I have no idea how they applied that. Uh, it seemed to me it kind of, well, defeats the purpose. Uh, obviously, you put on more solder to increase the opacity of that little thin copper trace. However, what with the, the slots in there, you would think it would keep the pixies, you know, make the pixies a little angrier than they should be. Maybe somebody can comment on that. Or if that's the way it should be. Doesn't look right to me. But the board does look well thought out. There's some isolation slots uh, routered out all over the place to keep the high side from the low side. If I had to venture a guess, this manufacturer, the Shenzhen Now Forever, this would be the house brand. And they make these, they must make these under contract for other people. It sure looks like an Automation Direct uh, GS2 drive to me. Now, normally I don't like reading the manual on account of it being just like cheating. However, I have fried much more better drives than this, so I figure I might as well get my dirty dick beaters on here and have a peruse through. And then we'll go ahead and put this back together, plug her in, see if we can't let the, not let the smoke out. Ay, 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 no es bueno mas problema. It's apparently three phase output. I had purchased on AliExpress single phase output so typo there somewhere uh i have a few well it's gonna fault but until we actually check to see if it'll run on single phase out chances are it'll say unbalanced leg or something like that and fault out but we might as well plug it in give her a try what now we've got our drive hooked up where for poking the pokey bit ends in the pokey end bit receptacle and we've got our load bank here this is a dummy load and neutral to hot blah 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 across every one so we got to make sure that none of these are shorted and if it's shorted we'll get infinite amperage on there and fry the cork stuffer there we go <laughs> check all three <laughs> and then this one to this one same same happy happy now, quarter ass fabric cobbled with the cheapest marrets that Shenzhen can manufacture. If you think about it, just about everything we buy is that. Scary. Whoopsie. Gentlemen, engage safety squints and clinch. Contact. There we go. I was going to say, well, that ain't no fucking good. So what's happening, what happened there was the power didn't come on right away because it needed to fill up those capacitors. So I don't know what that 440 means. All right. Can't keep a good man down. Fault troubleshooting EEO2. Power fault module. Excel D cell time too short. Short circuit on output side. So we're going to increase the accelerator deceleration time by changing the POO something something. So we're going to set parameter PO009 Excel speed. We can set it all the way to 3200 seconds. I don't think we need to be that fast. Stop, reset. Go enter. PO, enter. We go up. I believe, enter. Yeah, that seems to work. Um, go over this way okay I got the clamp on here and it doesn't read low enough I mean there's a decimal there but it, it really doesn't read low enough so what we can do is just put the conductor through and do some wraps and that increases 
the magnetic flux. The only thing you got to do is count the wraps, one, two, three, four, and then divide this number by, yeah, you guessed it, four. Now, by sheer luck, we have the dial here that is running hertz. So, we'll get her to run. And we'll start it up. And the control is in hertz, uh, volts, or volts per hertz. So, as the, it, it directly coincides to how many volts this thing puts out at a certain frequency. So, here we're at 40 hertz. One amp divided by four. 250 milliamps going through each one of these resistive elements. Now here we're at almost 90 hertz. And we're still not at full load on these. They're not that bright. So let's get the scope up. 90 hertz, I mean the wall socket, the pixies in the wall are only 60 hertz. So these are dancing quite a bit faster. I'm going to get the scope out. What for explaining more better. When you're dealing with AC, you stick your pokey bit in the wrong hole, you're going to fry your O-scope, which is, of course, no good. So what we're going to do is we're going to float the O-scope, meaning it's not going to be grounded. Of course, this will save the O-scope in case of operator cranial anal inversion. However, it doesn't preclude the possibility of lighting yourself up like that poor Iranian lady with the hirsutism problem on Electro Boom channel. Right, you can see this thing's noisier than a ham radio because it turned on all four channels despite there being no probes. So we'll just turn them off. Or if I got our little Fluke RMS meter hooked up to the output. If we look at the volts AC, you got 10 volts when it's just sitting there. We'll run this, and we can see, well, that's our 60 hertz. Uh, that's just background noise. So if we go change this to hertz, we can see it's measuring 60 hertz on the output. That's just noise. Now when we turn it on, that changes to 6 kilohertz. So that's our carrier frequency of the pulse width modulation. Now, what's that mean? Well, that's a fancy way of saying it turns off and on really, really fast. So if we look at it here, we see the output of the drive. Real weird looking waveform. But when you zoom right in, you can see it's a whole bunch of square pulses that's the drive getting turned off and on. It turns off and on fast enough at 6 kilohertz, 6,000 times a second, so that it fools everything into thinking it's getting AC, a nice sinusoidal waveform. It's not really. And we can see that here. You can hear that high pitch buzz. That's the 6 kilohertz carrier frequency. Off and on, 6,000 times a second. Now, unfortunately, won't be able to use this for what I intended because it is three phase out and uh, E009 output fault current asymmetry. Of course, that means one of the phases is dead, so it will be looking for three phases out. Bummer! There's another way to uh, outsmart this, and that would be to rectify it again and then send it to the tool. But if you're going to do that, I mean, What's the point? Lesson learned when you go into the skeezy back alleys or the interwebs, you never know what you're gonna get. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick out of the rice. The where to fours and the what have yous have yet to be decided, however, as such, I think she's just about time for a little cleaning. We'll gut the pig, and in the interim, I'll figure out what we're gonna do. I like to do this, uh, you put some time in there, what for gamifying the cleanup. So you only got, give yourself about an hour or so, an hour and a half, and uh, that way you, you don't end up dilly-dallying. Good enough. Well, another disaster avert. I want to show you this quickly. A uh, kind viewer sent me this a while ago. And I would never buy one of these just because, I don't know, it just seems like junk to me but anyway he was adamant he'd send this to me uh, and 
yeah anyway thank you very much because I actually did find a use for it I find them useless for fasteners I don't care for it because you have to push so jesus hard and then you can't leave it on it just pops off on its own but what I did find it good for works like a hot dam on clevis pins this is one of those gator sockets clevis pins it works great so thank you very much we got Oh yeah, the Milwaukee, of course, letting me down. Full batteria. Oh, this is the one I'm supposed to fix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Son of a diddly. Anyway, you get the, you get the idea. So thank you. It actually does have a good use. Now, you never know what treasures you're gonna find here as you get digging through the layers. Look at this 2004 sample pack, Altera. There's some confuser chips. This is neat though. I mean, you see how tiny the pins are on this. Look at that, look at that. But this, this is something. Yeah, this is mind blowing. Look at that. That's a BGA range, a grid. And so it's actually balls of solder. There's no way you get your soldering iron in there to, what for connecting it up, but anyway. I figured this would make a nice little tray for dies and taps and whatnot. Focus, you f And of course, I wouldn't dream of throwing these out. They might come in handy one day. Actually, I throw them in the bin and then we crush them up in the impact mill and get the gold out of them. That's a uh, video for another time. Might have to have a look at that in the microscope, but, uh, well, down to 30 minutes. And the bench isn't even cleaned yet. See, that's why I put myself on a timer. Son of a diddly. That's pretty cool. If you would fo <laughs> it just doesn't end. T minus 16 minutes, but we have managed to supplant the old junk for new junk. And this is the way, before Arduinos and before Raspberry Pis, this is the way that you would get eval boards. And they'd be all proprietary and they'd have their own tool chain and all that stuff. And they'd, they'd come with fancy catalogs and all that sort of stuff. But, oh, here's some memory chips. These, of course, destined for El Crusher. Okay, 16 minutes. 15 minutes. Hey, check this out. The man, the mustache, the legend, Randy Richards in the shop. He sent this to me. Um, he makes these, so if you need a 60 degree cutter with an insert, yeah, uh, check out Randy Richards' channel. That's kind of nice, because it's even serialized. Like, obviously, there's some care taken. Uh, lovely machining on this. Thank you very much, Randy. I appreciate it. All right, time. I guess now we can put this back together. Well, actually, we got to go through the electrics, but I think we better leave out a bowl of rice and hope the iPhone fairy comes and fixes it. I want to do something fun. Now, oh, fuck it. Let's do something fun. Ooh, this is cool. I came across this. It's sent to me by Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan. Some Nylatron, and no, that is not the cross-dressing transformer. It's actually polyamide and nylon mixed with molybdenum disulfide, self-lubricating bearing material. Stiff as a wedding prick. This is going to come in handy. Thank you very much. Jonathan also sent me some stainless 304 letters here that he cut out. So uh, have some fun with that. Maybe make a little sign or something. Thank you very much. <laughs> 